Hey everyone, this is Brian from Provision Studios, and today I'm making a video about using the uh, Studio Live 32 SC or the Studio Live series of consoles with uh, Studio Live, or I'm sorry, with Personas Studio One uh, hand in hand. So the question on uh, uh, one of my videos was um, any effects that you put on the Studio Live while recording, do they record? into Studio One and can you edit them? So um, the short answer is yes. Anything you do on the console is able to be edited on the, on the software side by simply uh, going to the track you just recorded and then manipulating the plugins that you set on the console inside the software. And I'll show you how to do that today. Um, just Just real quick, I want to give an overview of the DAW mode uh, on the Studio Live console. So um, the Studio Live is able to not just give you uh, the overlay of all of your inputs on the console, and your routing, but it's also uh, able to go into what is called DAW mode, where anything that you have on the, uh, the inside of Studio One can then be brought over to the console to be mixed edited or whatnot so um the way you do that is you click on the use cnet button on the uh studio live console and you're going to see a drop down of all of the options you have so anything you have set up on the software side uh, whether it be logic pro tools or a uh, cubase you can select those and then set them up properly inside of pro tools or logic to communicate back and forth to one another um, with Studio One, obviously, Personas makes the Studio Live console and the Studio One software, so they are really they're 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 married together in that sense where they work together well. So you just uh, would select your software. In this case, it's Studio One. Then you select the doll button. When you press that, the console zeroes out from whatever your uh, your 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 routing is. On, on the console side of it, and now this becomes a control surface for Studio One. So I will demonstrate this later in the video. I just wanted to show you guys that now, so when I start pushing buttons, you're aware of why the scene on the console, the faders, changes. Um, so And I'll mention that when I do that. So I'm going to click the doll button now to get out of doll mode and go back to console view, which has given me all of my inputs that are on the on the console itself. So um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go grab my bass and I'm going to record in a uh, a quick little bass line to a drum beat I created inside of uh, Studio One, and then we're going to do it like like we're going to dive into that to see what I did and how uh, Studio Live recorded it and how Studio One received it. Okay, so I'll be right back. All right, so we're back inside of Studio Live and Studio One. We've got our bass, and we're plugged into channel 12 on the console. So um, I can hit select, and then my main view on the, uh, the display of Studio Live is going to show me that channel. So in this case, I'm looking right at my input for channel 12, which is my bass. So um, I can have the channel muted or in which case no signal goes through to your output. I can unmute that, and now I got my signal. Um, I can adjust my gain with the gain knob here, so I can, so I can make sure I get my, my signal where I want. So I'm right where I want to be, at around negative 12 dB. So my input's good. Now what I want to do is I want to set up my channel for my instrument. So I can uh, select on EQ here. I've got EQ and compression. I've got a noise gate. And those are just three of the fat channel effects that are available right inside of Studio Live. So I am going to click on presets. And I am going to use my scroll wheel to go find the sound I want. Which in this case, I'm going to choose electric bass one. All right. I can hit recall. And now what that has done is that has taken the presets for the uh, electric bass one uh, 
effect and put it onto my channel 12 input. So if I go to EQ, I can see the EQ settings right here. Now I can select frequency here and scroll, use my scroll wheel again to the frequency I want to boost or cut. In this case, I'm going to boost at 60 hertz. I can select my gain and I can boost my gain now. Okay, so I can go to my compressor now. And the way I normally do this, especially on bass, if I'm if I'm playing bass, is I will try to uh, use one hand. So I'm going to play up. Uh, I won't play an aggressive line. I'll simply play with with one hand, and I'll adjust the settings uh, as I play in. So my threshold is set. I can adjust my threshold right here with the knob. So I'll play, and I can see right here on my LED my amount of gain reduction. So I'm getting a healthy amount of, of gain reduction, about 4 dB right there. And then I can go to my makeup gain right here, and I can dial back in about what I'm reducing. That's direct in, and that's with the compressor. So I've got those settings there. There's my 60 hertz. Uh, uh, a two and a half dB increase. That's direct in. And that's what my low end boost. So I've got my fat channel set the way I want. I've got my EQ going and I've got my compressor set to give me about four dB a gain. All right. So now I want to put my EQ before the compressor. There we go. Cool. All right, so now we're going to go inside of Studio One, and we are going to record along to a drum beat that I drug in. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mono track. And I'm going to name this bass. There we go. All right. Uh, for routing purposes, channel 12 is what we want to set this track to because that's what we're using on the Studio Live console. So I select channel 12. I'm going to mute this because I don't need, I'm monitoring through my headphones. I don't need to hear the playback through Studio One. I'm going to select the monitor just so I can check to make sure it's receiving signal. And it is. We can see the, the, the level light showing up there. I'm going to open up my mix window so I can see what I got going on here. You can see right here on this channel, it says fat channel on it. So I'm going to double click on that, and that's going to show me basically what I just did inside of the Studio Live console. So this uh, preset defaulted with a limiter. Uh, uh, enabled. I'm going to turn that limiter off. I don't need that limiter on. So I'm basically just using the compressor and EQ. And the same thing I did on the console where I swapped EQ and compressor, I can click this button and do it again. And then over here, we'll see that the compressor is now in front of the EQ. I can click it here. EQ is now in front of the compressor, and it switched it here inside of Studio One. So they are truly communicating in real time with one another back and forth. So anything I do on the console is being replicated inside of Studio One, and anything I'm doing in Studio One is being repl replicated on the console. So I have a true marriage between the console and the software right now. All right, so let's do some recording. <laughs> stop that all right so um let me take the bass off 
and then we will come back and take a look at what we just did. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're back inside the, uh, the, the software in the console. We've got our recorded track. Let's give it a listen real quick, and I'm going to do that in isolation mode. I just want to hear what we recorded, make sure it's clean. And I'm going to, I'm going to use uh, the, the Studio Live console for my, um, my, tra my transportation controls for this. So I'm going to hit the play button here on the console. All right, it's 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 clean. It's what we need. I'm going to listen to the both tracks together. Return to zero and play. All right, very good. All right, so what we have here now is in Studio One, we have the what you would call the raw track. I plug direct into the console with my bass going out of my uh, Avalon U5 and um, captured the bass. And what we're hearing right now is the non-fat channel uh, track. So we have a dry track without the effects that we uh, recorded with. What's up with that? Okay. Again, I showed you guys at the start of this that fat channel icon that was at the top of our mixer strip for the bass. What we do now, when we want to impart the, the effects that we tracked with or from our session, all I have to do is take the fat channel icon, click it, and drag it down into inserts, and now we have a link between all the settings that we chose on the console while we were tracking, and they're now going to be on our, our track that we uh, recorded inside of Studio One. So isolated. I'm going to go into doll mode for this. So here's my bass track. I'm going to solo it and hit play. And I'm going to turn off the fat channel. And you can see here in the software, fat channel is disabled. I can turn it on here. And inside of Studio One, fat channels come back on. Alright, let's listen to it with both. And while while I'm doing playback, guys, I'm going to level I'm going to mix it a little bit. It's just a bass and a drum, but I want to make sure that they're uh, in, in, they're close in their levels. So I'm going to turn them down and then slowly work them up to the level I want it to be at. And everything I just did here was mimicked on the uh, Studio One uh, software. So any move I make, fader-wise, is going to be replicated inside the software. So again, from the top. And then if there were any changes I wanted to make, I'm now in the software so I can adjust the compressor. I can change the compressor. If I don't like the low end, I can turn it off completely. I can turn that band off. Without that channel 
or without fat, fat channel, sorry. With the fat channel in. With my low end boost. So they, they, they're they working together. Anything I'm doing on the console is being mimicked in the software, and anything I'm doing in the software is being mimicked on the uh, console side. So the cool part about that is that after I've recorded, I am not um, painted into a corner with the decisions I made while tracking. I can change compressor types. I can change compressor settings. I can change EQ types and EQ settings. I can make this track match the session I want even if it's completely different after I recorded all these instruments than the tracking session. So what I thought sounded good while I was tracking a bass or a guitar may not work once I've got the full session going. And effects that you want to give to a, let's say, a vocalist so that they can hear themselves the way they want, none of that stuff has to be imparted into the actual final track unless you want to. So this really is a great way to work um, non-destructively uh, you're always able to make changes at any stage of the game uh, along the way uh, using the Studio Live along with Studio One software uh, I hope this helped answer anyone's questions about the Fat Channel and how it works with Studio One if you have any questions about what I did here today or any other questions for that matter please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, or you can always reach out to me via email at bbuck822 at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope everyone is doing well. I appreciate your support uh, for my channel here, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Until then, have a great one. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.